I have a problem. I like eBay and looking for old computers on eBay. Sometimes I can go for months without looking for anything on the site except the occasional needed part or tool, but other times I just can't help myself searching the seemingly endless offerings of forgotten, interesting, and odd things that can show up at any given time. When this happens, I tend to make purchases. Purchases which can be described as pointless, dumb, maybe a waste of money. At the very least, I am self-aware of these facts. Nevertheless, this is one of those purchases. A box. Not just any box, though. A box with a Celeron sticker. Wow. Fortunately, this factory sealed box from September 18th, 2000 also came included with some things inside that definitely caught my attention. For just about 21 years, these items inside have been waiting for someone, anyone, to break the seal and liberate them from the tyranny of packing and shipping materials. Seeing as I collect computers generally regarded as shredder fodder, I figure that person may as well be me. Naturally, a dull knife is required for this delicate procedure. And here is why you never plunge the knife blade into the box. How could we properly get started if the getting started guide got cut? Truly a most horrific scenario we luckily do not have to overcome today. This is actually the first time I've ever gotten a new old style computer like this. So to open this up and see this guide, as well as cutting open the contents verified sticker, is very neat to me. Opening the accessories portion of the box, we see a Logitech mouse. This was apparently a factory option, so I assume this was before Dell started packaging their own branded mice. Then we see the Dell Dimension Newsletter Volume 2, Issue 1, very exclusive. It's packaged with the power cord and mouse pad. Interestingly, a parallel printer cable is also included. That's a pretty nice touch. Educate You Online Training Courseware. Direct learning from Dell. I imagine this was actually a fairly valuable thing to include for a computer back then. Computers had already been thoroughly integrated into life at this point, but getting lessons online probably alleviated a lot of tech support calls. Educate You is no longer a service but looking at the Wayback Machine captures do still provide a window into what this system looked like. Moving on, we get the setup guide. Made in United States, even. On the left side, we get another smaller box containing all the software and recovery disks. A very practical storage solution on Dell's part for squarely placing the blame on customers for losing their disks. I'll show the software in a few minutes. Finally, we get to the last item. A keyboard more rare and valuable than a Model M by leaps and bounds, the Dell Quiet Key. These, of course, aren't particularly special, but to now see one brand new without decades of use and neglect certainly ties into my irrational computer collecting tendencies. Now on to unearthing the main event, to free this magnificent device from its cardboard and foam prison for the first time since it was packed almost 21 years ago. Here it is, in all its glory, the Dell Dimension L566CX. Small in stature, and power, and appeal to most collectors, but a much welcome addition to my hoard. Not a scratch or smudge on it with perfectly intact case badges. Around the back are PS2 mouse and keyboard, two USB 1.1, VGA, parallel, and serial ports. Sound Blaster PCI audio card, and a modem. Interestingly, whoever ordered this originally did not want a network card.
Inside is a proprietary micro ATX motherboard running an Intel Celeron socket 370 processor at 566 MHz, a single 128MB stick of PC100 SD RAM, a 10GB Quantum Fireball Plus IDE hard drive, 145 watt power supply, a 3.5 inch floppy drive, and a straight up basic CD drive with no burning functions. You know what? I gotta do the LGR thing. <sighs> Nothing like that fresh electronic smell. Looking over everything included in the box, you may be thinking, wait a second, this isn't everything I need to get the most out of my new powerhouse of a Celeron. How am I supposed to see Word and listen to totally legitimate Napster downloads? While these computers did typically ship complete with a CRT monitor and a set of speakers, those items came in a separate box, and that box was not included with this computer. Annoyingly, the seller removed and tossed the original packing slip, but the ad for this sale did include a picture of some of it. Here you can see this computer did in fact ship with a 17-inch E770 CRT and a set of Harman Kardon HK speakers. I'm not so much missing the speakers, but it would have been really cool to get this monitor brand new too. Maybe one day. Checking out the Getting Started Guide, it pretty much boils down to plug thingy in, turn thingy on. All very basic steps for hooking everything up with idiot proof illustrations. But that being said, there was certainly a 100% chance that someone somewhere looked at this and their brain exploded at the complexity. That's okay though, there's no one single person who is good at every single thing. I certainly do enjoy this extra documentation. Here's just a quick better look at the Educate You paper. Feel free to pause the video and read to achieve enlightenment. Moving on to the software, we have WorkSuite 2000. This includes Works, Word, Money, Home Publishing, and Expedia Street and Trips, as well as Encarta Encyclopedia, all of the 2000 variety. Then the Dell Recovery Disk for Win98 SE with the OS booklet. Software for the modem, even including a phone cable. Norton Antivirus, also of the 2000 variety. A Dell Resource CD with drivers, utilities, and digital documentation. Finally, a disk for Dell ePro, which was their dial-up internet service. With all of this out of the way, Let's get to awakening this computer from its couple decade rest. Would you look at that, awake and making noise. My workspace is very small, so forgive the terrible recording angle of the monitor. Or don't. I'll leave it up to you. Now, at this point I was starting to get a little concerned because the system hung at this stage in the post. But leaving it alone was the best course of action as it finally found that loud quantum hard drive and proceeded with starting. Software license agreement screen then popped up. And rest assured, I studied on these extensively before hitting that any key. Right after that was this screen showing the service tag and code information. 
Then I got a little nervous again as the computer rebooted. It took quite some time to complete the post process behind this full screen logo. But, as last time, showing some patience was the solution, and the Windows 98 SE boot screen appeared, setting that mighty quantum fireball off to the races. Once in the OS, Dell's first time setup screen pops up to handle keyboard layout, owner name, modem setup, the Windows license agreement, again, then upon completion you're showered in praise and confetti. All that is left is to set the date and time, then... Oh yes, that startup sound. Either you're happy to hear it, or frustrated from Windows 98 crashing and needing a reboot. Looking around on this OAM install, we can see all of the bundled software already included. I'll just speed up looking through some of this. The computer is actually very responsive, loading up these few various things without issue. Given the specs, there really wasn't a whole lot of room for bloatware like today's computers. Sure, there's a lot of software and Norton is running, but I would argue this isn't really an issue. All things considered, this system has held up very well where it was stored for all these years. I certainly intend on keeping it in pristine condition. As for what to do with it, I'm not entirely sure beyond adding it to the collection. For some reason, I've always just liked Dell products from this era as well as before and shortly after. This is a very cool time capsule, and as lame as it sounds, that's enough for me. I do intend on making an image of the hard drive as I usually do with such computers, just in case the drive lives up to its name and does turn into a fireball. Well, that about does it. Thanks for watching.